Our next presentation is by Alberto Massa from Three Start Connect on counting fish from forests. Welcome, Alberto. Welcome, everybody. My name is Alberto Massa. I'm a software and hardware expert in artificial intelligence, prediction, and IoT devices. My expertise took me to work with the biggest in AI, like Google, Amazon, AWS, and Intel. I've been working with the most brilliant mind in artificial intelligence around the world, with a special collaboration of Eric Cambria, professor at Nayang Technology University of Singapore. He was listed in the best 10 brain in the artificial intelligence feature in Forbes. So why am I speaking to you today? Today, I'm going to give you an insight into a bridging the digital divide can contribute to a sustainable future toward and a digital blue planet for all. Thanks for watching. The project we are talking about today is the Resilient Rivers mobile app. It's one of a kind app that will allow to count in fish from forests for food security and will be a game changer in many areas where fisheries data collection over many years has been quite a challenge. The digital transformation leapfrog technology that I'm going to present to you relates to four key points. Multidisciplinary practice counting fish from forests with more accessible dig digital resources for stakeholders. Innovation for empowering accessible digital participation for users at the front line of aquatic food security. FAO Fisheries and Forestry, the Resilient Rivers multidisciplinary project aims to bridge fishery and forestry management sector through a more holistic approach to watershed management through collaborative practice and bringing data from many dimensions together. Data knowledge gaps, how we can address data deficiency, freshwater ecosystem with new way of collecting data related to habitat condition and food security. Over the past 20 years or so, fishery and data collection in Zambia as in some other regions of the world, has not had sufficient resources to implement a full picture of the state of ecosystem resources. Data tends to be sporadic and extrapolated between surveys, which are sometimes only partial data sets. One of the reasons for this is due to the limited resources that the fishery officers have to collect data. Often data has been collected on paper, but there are few computers available to digitalize this dataset, so aggregating this data also becomes a problem. So, a solution to tackle these issues is, is through a mobile app. The app needs to be a set of clearly defined user-friendly tools to enable data collection to provide more information for improving management decision about fisheries and forestry resources. Not only will be very easy to use, but also easy to maintain due to the low cost in the mobile tech. We strategically handle all the big data cost, one of the big challenges in the cloud industry, by the app identifying the minimum necessary data and compressing it before it's uploaded to be analyzed. We are also exploring ways to incentivize data collection so that not just for fishery extension officers, but also stakeholders can play and activate a role and participate in resource management. It's very important to frame the outcome of the app in terms of sustainable development goals, like through the social element of the app to empower stakeholders to build a community of practice for responsible production and consumption, or empowering social interaction within a food security and ecosystem-based management context. The stakeholder app enables participation in data collection from downstream stakeholders in value chains, particularly women, trading and processing commodities, 
who frequently have access to more data than primary producer. Verifiable dataset. Dataset can be processed both by using machine learning or verified using manual analysis of size, count, and species using photogrammetry and traditional taxonomy for image data. Knowledge gaps. Collecting species level data versus cages enable monitoring of invasive species, size enable water quality, monitoring and insight from increased data collection frequency. Leapfrog technology, innovation to bridge technology gaps, enabling a greater level of inclusion and low cost data collection without large scale investment in computers. We are at the end of the presentation and I'm very grateful for your interest on our Resilient River Mobile app. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Alberto. It's great to see you working on Resilient River Basins. Um, As you can see, I'm not an actor. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did very well. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> it's good to see people working on river systems, something that definitely needs uh, global attention and often is is left out of the uh, the mix when we talk about aquatic systems. I'm just wondering uh, when you're trying to develop these apps that are going to be used by people on river systems in Zambia, for example. Yeah, there's many have, challenges. Yeah, it must be very challenging even just to roll out some type of system and yeah. get feedback. And have you have you found any other groups doing this where you maybe we could for example, set up some some type of uh, some type of community around how the apps are being taken up, what what's working, what isn't working, or uh, have you just relied on your experience of building? Yeah, I'm, I'm related, and uh, I'm as I as I mentioned, I was working with Google, I was working with Amazon, AWS, uh, in many startups, mm -hmm. and the problem also in our world, in a normal situation, is to involve the people. If it's not a social um, uh, a social app or social dating app, the people are not really involved in a, to give the personal time to collect data, for example, in the fishery. Mm -hmm. So I just watching all the previous presentations that are all very nice and very clever uh, solution. The one that uh, is close to us in our app is the one of the tuna scope. Tunascope, they just give a, a SAA, a software as a service, the SAS. Why? Because they took something uh, that already is been going in, in this whole year to recognize the tail of, of the tuna by eyes. And so they, they take practice in take a set of collection of all the different uh, quality of the tuna and give a, a nice tools. So the people, of course, they they just change. It's a game changer from a normal person that are going in extinction because the young people they don't even know how to recognize a tail. We got a very good tools that we call in, in US software as a service. So we give something and we collect data. Yeah, we see it's an exchange. My vision, people. yeah, my vision for the app and, and involve the people. Is about uh, okay. We got the officer, the fishery officer, that they got to do their job. So they go around, they take a move, they take a, a video, a movie. We convert all the information, and we got a, a data set. But this is just a part. We want to involve also the women. The women are the the last in the chain. Is the one that they go in the market, take the fish, go home, cook, and this is where we need to have the security. In this case, so our app is okay. We recognize the fish, but also we want to give to this woman, to these people, also in the market, the one that uh, they got to sell to the to the end user. So in between, between the fisherman and and the last uh, woman that they got to cook there, we want to give this app that uh, help them to recognize also the quality. Because uh, I just was trying. Uh, with some data feature. I have the problem that uh, when a fish was sick, so he got like a, a bite or the normal disease, also one eye, 
we didn't recognize well the fish. So I had to create a library for all the diseases. And then I say, okay, I give you a solution for all these women, for all these people. They, they take a picture of the fish, they straight away know if it's good, in good shape. If it eyes is, is not an old one, if you got some, some spot that can be, a, I don't know, I'm not in, in zoology, but I got some filaria, I say, like my dog can have it. And uh, so they already recognize that the fish is good. Then also, uh, based in my research, uh, they can also, when they open the fish, for example, a salmon, I understand that the salmon, if it's coming from a, a wild environment or they come from the hatchery, there's a huge difference. They got the line of the fat that is bigger or hurt. So it's also another uh, quality of fish. So this is the, the tools that we want to give to involve this person. About all, also we want to give a reward because uh, some people think, okay, I got to work for the FAO to collect data or whatever, but I, I'm doing, nobody want to work for free. So we give you something that is already good for you, but if you collect more data, I can give you a reward. The rewards can be, we can ask Google to give a, a free YouTube movie or a AWS something from Amazon. Uh, it, there is a way or just uh, uh, I send you a pair of pen to cook a better food or I give you free uh, recipe. So we need the, all the data can come by themselves and we cannot ask the people to help us to make a better world because they got already something to do in their spare time. But if it can give you something reward, this data collection will resolve many more gaps that we have in, in this situation. Another problem that we see is about the, the connection. Not all the people can have a, a good connection. Uh, so what we wanna do, we wanna do on the edge, a small library where we already recognize for example, if we are talking about Zambia in a lake, so we probably have uh, 10 species of, uh, of fish, 20, whatever. So we, we just reduce a small library on the edge in a way that I recognize straight away the fish. I recognize if it's uh, sick or not for the food security, so we know that it's okay. And then once uh, I got the, the connection, we just synchronize all the data with our server, all compress it and all. So we try to move in, in this way. Thank you very much. Any uh, questions? Alberto, it, it reminds me of the, a talk we had yesterday from Scott Nazim, who was also trying to, you know, bridge the gap between data that comes from the fisher all the way to data that comes from the the consumer and, and link those two. And you can see in the future from your story that potentially in the future, those relationships will start to link up in real time. Where people yes. say, I have these fish coming in and the lady knows or the man knows that I'm coming down to, you know, we can, we can do this. It's gonna take us a while, but that conversation is already visible in the distance and hopefully we can get there. Matt, have you got one question by any chance? Yeah, I do. Um, I think uh, what's interesting, uh, coming from Alberto's knowledge is, um, you know, a lot of the software that we're using across every presentation that we've seen has not been born in our domain at all. Uh, typically photogrammetry, uh, point tracking, uh, SIF, SLAM, all of these things come from uh, technologies such as aerospace, uh, missile tracking systems from the 80s, um, and, and then the, the AI algorithms for, for, for rebuilding camera positioning, camera tracking, and, and 3D modeling, texture recognition. All of these things are like third hand to us. Um, and in uh, the, the most recent developments in AI and machine learning, I think are typically in marketing online um, for scraping data in, in the world. And we're really using these algorithms as almost fourth hand technologies and applying them to a real world scenario, whereas typically they'd be based on 2D images of what people bought from a shop. Yeah. Alberto, from your experience, where do you see AI going and what's the trajectory in the next, say, 10 years? 
in in, in our what we are talking today well no just from your 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 knowledge of of you know in that in the nor in the normal domain okay. of, there is one word Google. in prediction in just a prediction so what we as you say we have a lot of scrapping tools around with the artificial intelligence but what we're doing for example once in a project that i was following prada is one of the biggest brand in the world in fashion they they start using the uh, prediction by scraping around instagram they just was to see how the people will dress in order to give a product that they already like it for example me i use the polo everybody use the polo or, or jeans a special color eh? so they was just coming out with something that you already like because was the common uh, uh, use or in, in the young people or in the middle aged guy, you know, so they was targeting the people. For me, that I'm already 50, I say, okay, I, I use polo also because I'm getting fat. So the, the shirt is a little bit. Also, that one was a, um, a, a, a data set to see a big round face, polo, this is fat. So there is a million people like this more in usa so let's focus this on selling polo for big size guy so this is the evolution that uh, is coming the prediction like uh, prediction, right. like we are doing also in the in the factory in 4.0 we use uh, th this kind of guys now this is a demo but this is the small one that we put and uh, we we know if uh, um electric motor is going to die so we keep uh, we keep our maintenance before this happens so we don't we don't uh, break a production in a i don't know in, in a chain of pasta that uh, factory of pasta or whatever so this is the uh, because the future also i now i'm talking about green planet so i can see a future we, we are working on the smart city we can work also in a smart forest. This gap that uh, we use to, to uh, ask these people, the end user to help us to collect data can be a, a normal, uh, a small camera, IoT device that can last uh, five years with a small solar panel in the marketplace where all the fish pass. Or uh, we can put all in, in the forest, uh, uh, also for animal in the in the forest, not only in the in the water. In the water, the challenge, as uh, I think, who was uh, Amanda, maybe and Chris, yeah. Amanda, that uh, you, you got the camera in the water. So the camera in the water, uh, you know, the, it can be uh, algas, it can be dirty in a, quite a, very soon. So, uh, but can be a solution for that and uh, with the camera and uh, in our the things network for for green uh, planet we can record we can take all this data collection and we can have 100 percent cover the, the the situation yeah. of the green planet this is fantastic. Be, uh, yeah the fantastic Alberto. i think it's really important for us as people that are interested in ecosystems resources to bear in mind that the main financial sectors as using AI and, and deep learning uh, and, and neural networks to predict the future now. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to have an impact on consumption of resources, on production of greenhouse gases, and everything that links. That, so they're already, they're already predicting the future because they're interested in financial investment, which mm -hmm. relates back to us right here, right now, discussing fish, actually. Uh, if you well, think about that, that, is, context. that yeah. is the job of fisheries management is prediction. So your whole role in fisheries management is to try to see the future and hopefully make the right decisions for the fisheries so that yeah. you're doing the right thing before you get into trouble. So yeah, thank you very much, Alberto. That was a fantastic, you're very insightful talk. And hopefully the, the waves of data coming in will make us better informed to make those predictions wisely.